Good afternoon and welcome to this haircut demonstration. This is my amazing model Bieber and today we're just refreshing her haircut. So this is about the third haircut I've done for her. It's been growing up really nicely. Through the sort of front and the sides, we're just maintaining it, so just taking a half a centimetre off. She's really enjoying having this longer length and being able to style, lots, style it in lots of different ways. Through the back, she's feeling like it's getting a bit too mullety. So we're just gonna take a little bit more off and tidy that area up. And so it's just easier for her to maintain. And I'm just gonna run through how to do it. Be very lucky that Electric Space has allowed me to use this studio to film a haircut, as you can see, uh, all the little products that they've got. Um, I've used their shampoo and conditioner already, just after covering Beaver's hair earlier. And I feel like it's the very least I can do is show you what they have to offer. But we'll get started on the haircut. And I'm just going to work from the top, getting my first section in. Just through the middle here, so I can see what I've done on the previous haircut, just to maintain. I'm gonna see this. Right, now that we can see our first section, I'm just gonna spin it around to the side so it's easy to see the cross section as well. And from the last haircut, just looks really nice and square, so it's quite flat across the top. And then it's just rounded and followed the head shape into the back. And I wanna maintain what she really has, so I'm literally just working from the front, so now I'm not gonna take anything off of the fringe area and just cut just a minimal off. Nice and straight, flat, straight across until I run out of hair. And through the top, I'm just going to work back to the previous section, just taking vertical sections, which when I come to the other side, I'll show you from a different angle. But you should be able to see my guide. And just coming flat across. Back to the previous. Nice and easy. Just want to focus on building up a nice square shape as well. So overall, on top, it's nice and flat this way and just perfectly flat. worked until I've run out of hair, you see which is just about the recession. So I'm going to show you from the front what my sectioning, was, what my sectioning looked like. So I'm just going to do it from the middle parting. It's nice and clean. Making sure I take a little bit of hair from the previous section to the new section. Just make sure I've got my guide. And just working until I run out of hair, which is pretty much 
this section just gone. And I'll just take a wee bit, yeah, just to double check that I've run out of hair and there's no strays. And I'm just going to cross check as I go. Cross checking is just literally, I cut this way, so I'll check this way. It's just working the opposite direction. So if you work diagonal down the head, you work diagonal the opposite way. Cross check everything as much as you can. Just make sure there aren't any finger marks. Fabulous. Now that we've worked through the top section and transitioning to the sides, you can see Viva's hairline just receives a little bit more and that's why I'm keeping it square because I want to retain some length and fullness in these areas. So through it into the sides, maintaining that sort of square shape. We also like having a really soft outline so I'm going to lift out my section like that so that will retain some length in the outline and just super soft while also retaining a lot of strength and weight around the session area. Again, it's always important to work clean. You can see I've got a nice primary section that's taking enough of the hair from the top section. I know where my guide is. I know I'm not going to cut it too short. Get a nice little clean section into the side. And for me, I always like to investigate my previous pet cut and just make sure I know where my outline is. Just like to know where I'm going. So absolute minimal in this area. It's going to work on base, so I'm not really going to use much of the direction to begin with. Just dust off. Following my previous section. Nothing too complicated. Now that I'm getting closer to the front as well, you can see where the recession and also just the hairline. I want to make sure that I retain as much as possible, so I'm actually just going to bring it back to that sort of third section I worked on, just to make sure I'm not taking anything away. And at the end of the haircut, once I've blow dried, I can refine the outline and take any excess weight away. But I just want to retain that more to begin with.
defining the first section of work in again, making sure it's nice and clean, and then transitioning into the back. Because I'm working in a square shape, we'll start from the middle where the skull protrudes the most, so where it sticks out. And that way it's much easier to control the shape. <laughs> I forgot what word. <laughs> I knew you could feel it. Yeah. I was like, what do I say? <laughs> so that was too much, too much of a quiet moon. It's oh, alright. Yeah. I, do, I plan to release this as just a full haircut, so there will be quiet moments, there will be silly moments, there will be moments where I we're, we're on a journey. We're on a journey. Yeah. Um, Making haircuts in softcore next essential. There will be highs and there will be lows. There will be recession. <laughs> there will be recessions. <laughs> Even knows. And we're not talking about the economy. Sad times for the corners of my head. <laughs> How are you feeling talking? Yeah, good. It feels, I feel like I'm presenting. Like now that I'm talking to you, I feel more normal. Mm -hmm. um, but just, I'm just trying to think of the words, you know? Yeah. And try and be as clear as possible. Not saying any of that arm and arm and all that crap. Mm. Um, So yeah, no, it's good. Am I making sense? You are making sense. Do you understand what's happening? Yeah, you're, you're speaking very clearly. Thank you. And it's, you know. It's good. It's good. Right. I worked until I ran hair, just pushing it forward as the skull was running away. I don't want to go too far into the back because square sections starting from top, side, side, back. So when I get to back, I can then take any more weight away that I want to. Just kind of all back across so I can just cross check now. So I'm just coming across and just slightly come in and just make sure that it's nice and clean. And just dusting off any areas where you've got little finger marks. I think one of the key things when cross-checking is elevating the hair the same way that you elevated when you did your primary cutting. So if I was graduating the hair, then I wouldn't be lifting it as high as I am now. Because I layered it, I am. Um, Again, with the shape on the sides, just elevated it about this much, and then through the side as well, just retaining that shape so nice and square, nice and flat. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. I probably won't talk as much because you should be paying attention. No, I'm, just, I'm joking. I'm just going to repeat myself on there. Yeah. I should do it in Spanish. Why not? Because I can't speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> That's why not. <laughs> um, it's actually quite hard to do this without a mirror. I bet it's in fact. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm praying that that's the same as section here. Cheers. Well, that's why I'm <laughs> yeah, well working on this. Um, Now, often, actually, I thought something important. People find one side of the hair quite easier than the other side, especially doing short hair. And for me, my right hand side is a lot easier than my left hand side. For me, I find it's my shoulder position, it's a lot easier to get my arm in this way, whereas for me, it's a lot harder to get it in this way. One thing that I've learned is that you've got a little bit more range of movement when you come to the right hand side 
Whereas that actually, when you come to this side, we tend to stand quite close and you have less range of movement. So if I was up against a wall, like, I mean, I'm, well, Peter's not a wall, but I'm up close to her, I've got less range of movement. Because if you just take a step back, then what that allows is a lot more freedom in your arm and then you can manipulate your body and come in a lot easier and a lot more comfortable. Whereas if I'm in quite close, it's a little bit more claustrophobic and I can't really get that comfort in my work. So that for me, taking that half step back gives that shoulder space so you have the range of movement, just makes your life 10 times easier. And in taking my first section, I can feel that I don't have enough of a guide from the top, which is cool. I'm just gonna come back in and start my section again. So that range of movement with the shoulder, hopefully can help you be out. Making sure the hair is wet, just so it's easy to keep the sections clean. Take a step back in the chest, turn from the sides, so hopefully you can see a little bit more what I mean. Just giving myself that space. And I'm exaggerating a little bit as well, because I feel quite far away now. Um, so I just take a half step, make sure I've got, there it is. And it's just a lot more comfortable to work like that rather than super close and tight. it's easier to sweep up less hair or more hair. Um, what, of this specific floor or just in general? Like? Uh, floor doesn't matter. Okay. Anymore. Just okay. in general. Um, probably less hair, I'm going to say. It's not uh, like they're in clumps. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a trick question because you're just still sweeping up hair. You're still sweeping up hair. <laughs> and you still have to cover the same amount of floor space to make sure you've got it all. Yeah. <laughs> Was this a hint like, yeah, peeps? Um, no, no, it's all. say? No, uh, no, no, no. You sweep the floor, let me bang in. This is an example of things I think about while I'm going here. <laughs> When I'm painting and stuff, the amount you just get right. weird, you get weird fluid thoughts, and it's like when you say step back, you're like, actually what? What have I actually been thinking about for the last yeah. 40 minutes? It's because I threw some hair on the floor and I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to tidy up that later. <laughs> and I was like, oh, there's not much hair. I wonder if it's easier to clean up less hair or more hair. I was about to say. Well, to be fair, if he has to clean up like one strand. Oh, that's a bitch. That would be a bitch. You can't find it. Exactly. I would just say I did it. Yeah, just lie. Who's gonna check? The tooth fairy. The tooth fairy. <laughs> <laughs> she yes. Knows. She knows. She, she knows. She knows. It's a good song. Um, mm-hmm. Are you impressed at how much my hair's grown though? Yeah, so long. I can't do that. Yeah, because I was like looking at it, it was, like two weeks yeah. before, and I was like, Jesus Christ, that actually has to grow quite a lot. Even if you just look at the roots. Yeah. Like, it's mad. Mm hmm. When I first did Bieber's hair, she probably had like a centimeter of regrowth from an old bleach and toner. We did a really nice strawberry, yeah. strawberry blonde that time and um, I've highlighted it today to just have a really nice beachy dirty blonde um, look for her but when we look at the regrowth it's like 
about three or four centimeters now. It's crazy. I, I, that was February when we did it. Yeah, have you cut my have you cut my hair since? Yeah, you trimmed did. Trimmed it once. Trimmed it. But apart from that, we've just been maintaining. Yeah. Or we've grown it. So again, cross-checking, removing any finger marks, making sure I'm happy. So for me, the top and the sides are done. I've kind of focused on that area first, so I just take away the least amount of hair. And then that allows me to focus on the back and just taking the right amount off without impacting the front, the haircut. Because that's a very easy thing to do. We sometimes start in an area where we cut more hair off. And that means if we take it too short, we can sometimes cut too much off further into the haircut. So, that's why I started on top, just to bring more control into the work. So I'm just shaking it out, seeing how it feels. And just enjoying the hair. And also looking for where the crown roughly is. I know roughly where my section ended on top. And just gonna separate the back from the top and the sides. And I'm I always like to bring a little bit extra in, just to be sure I've found my guide and the right place. But just kind of separating, just separating front half, back half. I also think that the ears are a nice sort of representation of where the front and back kind of begin and end. It's a nice little transition area. Bieber has lovely ears because they're bendy. You don't understand how annoying stiff ears are. Yeah, I bet it's fair. Actually, imagine you actually but now you've mentioned that. Imagine you had a paintbrush that yeah. didn't bend. Mm. Bieber's an artist, by the way. You obviously could tell. <laughs> that was, That's my water bottle. That was, that was <laughs> my hot water bottle. <laughs> my comfort blanket. <laughs> <laughs> I always have it with me. My fridge. <laughs> I literally just watched all the rings. It's good. I watched the extended versions. I'm a Star Wars person. I'm not really into all the TV stuff. Just because you are out of it. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> Alright, we're, we're doing the back now. Instead of chatting shit. <laughs> so this is just Electric's really nice leave-in conditioner. Uh, E4 prep spray or preparation spray, it's not be lazy. And it's just really nice, makes the hair heat a lot easier to comb when it's tangled. We've all got a leave-in conditioner that we love. And this one is fantastic, it's really light. It smells great too. Um, so working in the back, again, just gonna keep with having my square shape. So starting in the middle, I'll spin the hair around, or the person around in a second, so you can see the hair. You're just hair now. That's all you are to me. No name, no, just hair. It's like the thing from the Adam's family. <laughs> Literally. Alright, so that's our section at the back. Top to bottom. And I want to make sure that I just take more 
in the nape and the neck area. This is where the length is annoying bee bud, and you can see it's quite long, coming down the side a little bit, you can see. And she wants to take away that monetary feeling. She doesn't have any funky hairline problems. It grows out real nice. So I don't have to be too conscious of all those sort of things. So I think we can have a this one. Okay. I'm just gonna start cutting hair and hope it's the right angle for you. Um, yeah, this is good. It's good. Okay. So again, I'm just looking at the shape that we had last time and where the hair, you see it rounds off slightly. The longest point is about here and it starts to kind of come in. So I'm just going to graduate it a little bit more. I don't want to take too much off. Otherwise, we cut all the blonde out. So, when we come in to find the hairline, that will lift up really nicely and retain some of the blonde so it doesn't look like she's got any roots and regrowth from underneath. Sometime, just thinking ahead. Just nicely graduating this in. Maintained enough length so when I come to refine, we'll still have the blonde rub and then start to show off some of the brown. There might be some brown coming through, but that is. Well, we'll find out when we try it. So this is where I'm going to kind of personalize the haircut and step away from being so strict with classic shape. If we're staying strict with classic shape, then I'd work this whole section quite square and I'd retain quite a lot in the corners through here. But I actually want to take a little bit more out of the corners so it just kind of has a really nice transition into the sides. So I'm just going to just pivot from that main section, like a Terry's chocolate orange or just a regular orange. Um, and just pivot around really nicely, just and as I come into the sides, just over direct it a little bit more um, and more. So we'll just in there for a weekend. Try not to get killed by this trolley. Everything's precariously balanced on here, so I'm not touching it. And when you're working in the salon, when I'm doing hair, like without being conscious of who is watching. I am very conscious of my body position and make sure I'm always comfortable. This isn't how I'd usually stand, but I want to make sure that it's easy for you to see what I'm doing. And you can just see I'm just pivoting around and just adding that into the previous section. Just working my over direction a little bit. You know what, I think it might be easier from this angle to see the shape. back my work. I think as a creative everyone goes through blips of 
you know, not feeling as inspired, kind of losing your like spark a bit. Your mojo. Your mojo, exactly. Um, the full level really found my mojo in this project. So I'm working with a primary school in North London um, called Thornhill Primary School, um, which is great because I'm also because I'm Hackney born and raised, so it's local to where I grew up. So there's a connection there, um, and I'm doing art workshops with them. So. Um, my favourite one so far has been sort of challenging the kids to paint, but you're not allowed a paintbrush and you're not allowed proper art tools. So, you know, have a, you can have a scour, you can have a straw, and then just see what happens. And it's nice to see um, that childlike imagination. And then I've kind of um, been translating the outcomes from that into my own paintings in the studio. Um, so yeah, pretty exciting times. That's very exciting. There are two things that I loved about what you just said, is sometimes we lose our mojo, our creative spark. Yeah. And then doing the art with non-traditional tools. Yes. And it makes me think about well, how could we do hair with non-traditional tools. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be very interesting. I know uh, I've seen a few images where, especially like wig makers, they create some incredible things. There's a particular hairdresser that I worked with who created this incredible bob made out of paper clips. Oh, amazing. No, paper clips, safety pins, safety pins. Um, I don't know how to edit videos, but it's a picture. Uh, <laughs> um, which defeats the point because I would have learned how to do it over the end. And so his work and that image for me was just timeless. And like, I, I can, I'll show you it later and I'll show, it will obviously pop up now. And it's incredible. And it's that whole idea of doing hair without or non traditional tools. I just, I think there's, I think what's so nice about loads of the creative fields i mean i can only talk on london's behalf but that's because i am a Londoner and i'm here um but a lot of people are trying to like reinventing stuff in a very sort of original way um which is super refreshing to see i think after covid and all that kind of stuff people are being way more experimental with what they're passionate with how they work within their industries um which is really great to see. I mean, I remember I, I was like styling for this one shoot um, and they were sort of like using off cuts of hair, mm. dyed it all one set colour and then used to put it on um, like a latex like skull cap or yeah. bits of the hair and it kind of look, looks mossy. Um, a little bit furry but in a really interesting way. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe next time. Maybe next time, yeah. Shave it off and stick it on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it would be an interesting thing. For me, like, I love cutting hair, I love precision work. So that's going to be the main focus of what I do. But even just, like, you might be more into the avant-garde sort of side of life and creating something different. Um, or and just having a different approach and using different materials. I think it would be a very interesting way to access some creativity that you might not have thought of. Mm. And that's like going back to the other point was about how sometimes we do go through those periods where we aren't feeling as creative and in a little bit of a rut and maybe doing something different is a potential solution. Mm. That's why I think you know, having the technicalities um, and methodology like learned in the salon yeah. allows you to be able to understand and be more creative when doing more editorial kind of looks. You know, I think it's having a marriage between the two. Yeah, understanding technique, yeah. understanding how to do stuff, but then understanding how you can then bend the rules and play within those things, it's like cooking. I think cooking is the best example. Once you understand the recipe, 
you can then evolve it to suit your tastes. Mm -hmm. So spice is a very easy way. Everyone has a different spice level and you might love a recipe, but it's too spicy. So you just reduce that and then it becomes your own. And I think that's the same with working and doing haircuts, doing colors, you understand how to do it and then make it your own. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's another reason why I've really enjoyed working and doing the workshops with the like, primary school kids, because I'm trying to sort of unlearn things. Technically, you know, I, I would say, not to toot my own horn, but I'm a great oil painter. Um, and I know how to do everything very well, but then it does get to a point where, because of your knowledge of the technicalities and where your focus is, you lose the creative flair in that, which sometimes is a bit of a shame. So, and learning, I don't think is linear. Learning's constant, you know, and you do have to go through phases of kind of going back to square one and relearning um, certain parts of your practice. Um, which I think is really, really important to do every once in a while, you know? It is, but it, it's the whole thing of if you're always following instructions, you're not being creative. Yeah. Um, which you do need to follow the instructions to be able to create art, create whatever it is that you want to create. You need to learn how to do it, but once you understand how, you can then do it. it. Yeah, unravel it, do it in your own way, deconstruct. Yeah, I mean, you were talking about like which side of the head you feel most comfortable to, yeah. you know, to cut with. To yeah, cut. but it, I do feel more comfortable inside, but actually when I kind of understood body position and giving my shoulder extra space to work and even cross-checking now and just standing in a way where I can access the areas mm -hmm. without having to break my back because we're on our feet all day. It's going to be very easy to do some damage if you're not standing in the right way. And now I don't really have a discomfort on that side. It's just less preferable, if that makes any sense. Mm. But um, no, now we're back to the haircut for a second. <laughs> That's what it's meant to be about. Um, yeah, I finished going through the back. I hope you can kind of see um, just working that sort of angle, so just really tight, tucks it into the nape. Still got some length there, and we did kind of round it off just to take away some weight. And I came to the sides just to make sure I ran out of hair and not take too much away, bring my other direction back. And now I'm gonna blow dry it. I've already sprayed prep spray in, mainly in the back, but I'll spray a little bit more through the top, just prep spray, using conditioner, be preparing the hair. And just trying to think how you want to wear it. See, I, I'm just going to blow dry how I want to blow dry for the haircut, but normally you would ask a client what you want to do, how they want to wear it, they want parting, they want it swept back, and understand their styling. For me, like I prefer to be able to cut the hair and then refine it once it's dry, so I try to encourage a certain way of styling, but. Sometimes you can't always get away with that. Um, this, what I've just sprayed in, is the Volume Liquid Mist. Forgive me, I'm still learning all the products. And it's a really nice volumizing spray. There's a nice dry texture feeling at the end, and it doesn't really feel like there's much in the hair, but it does have a really good impact. All the products are super light, so you can be as generous as you want with them.
So with blow drying, that's just for me, it's just wrap drying, use a vent brush, working around the head and just drying it in its natural shape, natural form. Just gonna comb it through and just make sure I'm happy with everything, find the outlines and make sure that it's sitting nicely. Like I said, my people want to retain the length through the front, so that's going to take very minimal work. But we'll still do some light refinement, otherwise it's going to be pissing her off in about two weeks. So we'll look down a wee bit and spin it around. So I want to keep it soft, so I'm just going to point it into everything. Just work with the hairline. It's always important to keep in mind your body position. For me, coming around here, uh, just easier access. Also for yourself, you can see what I'm working. Like. I'm just looking at the sort of balance. And I just wanna just make sure just sits and feels right and doesn't look unfinished in any way. I think this is just like a personalization of what you see, how you want to sit, how you talk with your client, what they want and then just interpreting it in. And again, just going to work the same. Just refining the fringe a little bit. It's just kind of touching her eyebrows a wee bit, and for me, I just want to lift that up a touch. You can see it's retained a nice thickness in sort of the recession area, and a nice frame around the face. So I just want to enhance that. 
don't really need to do too much. Just pointing it all. I want to keep it soft. I start clock cutting, then I might get some harsh lines, and that's harder to take them out. Just really lightly. Just going to drill. Sorry if you can hear any background noise. We are in the central. Central. <laughs> we are in the centre of London. I don't think I'm actually hearing any of the street noise. Yeah, it's just us just chatting shit about us. I mean, yeah, we do trash it most of it, so. <laughs> There's no harm in it anymore. Do you struggle with the thickness at all, or is it more? Right? No, I love it. Because it's like more to like, mess around with it. Okay. Especially because, like, mm, I guess this is sort of process of growing it out a little bit, you know. Um, although we're, we're shaping it. Um, yeah. So I quite like having a lot to work with. So it's always good to ask questions as you go. Um, and asking Beaver about whether or not she enjoys the thickness of her hair. Um, that tells me whether or not I want to point into the whole haircut at all and refine anything else or if she likes it or dislikes. So it's a great way of establishing how much more you've got to refine, if anything. So where she says she's enjoying it, she loves having the extra hair, being able to style it. To me that tells me I don't need to do much. I can see a couple weight lines in the back, so I'm just gonna come back through just to check my primary sections and make sure they're all clean. You can see a little bit with the, with the curl just on the absolute edge of uh, needing to curl the back again and whether or not we do, that's another thing. Part of the process is just evolving started to transition to this dirty bond and I wasn't expecting that I was assuming that we were going to go strawberry again the second time and I, I always ask I always make sure I don't just repeat it and it was very helpful to ask that question because it allowed me to plan ahead make sure the colours are in I have them in stock, so it's always good to ask.
bench look or debunk. So just to recap, just nice sort of square shape through the top, just nice and flat, using a comb, nice and square, nice and flat, retaining the weight in the recession areas, transition to the sides, just elevate it out, you know, keep that sort of softness on the ear. Again, keeping that nice and square, so it's all build out the corners. Same on this side, and then through the back, just really nice sort of graduated shape into the neck, and actually just rounding into the corners a little bit, just so we don't get too much weight through here. And then just refining, around the outline and starting in the neck, making sure it's nice and tidy, and then just minimal through the front. It's already a great length, and it'd be interesting to see where you're gonna go next, because we've got a lot of people for you right now. Um, yeah, and then asking clients whether or not they like product in the hair, what product they like, and all that sort of stuff. Um, do you prefer it clean? Just a little bit of texture. Do you like just do you like it? Um, do you like to be able to see the wax of your cream, matte finish, or like a little bit shiny? Um, I'm open to anything. Maybe a little bit shiny. Yeah. I always like a bit putty. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah. This is a good thing about this haircut because it's kind of timeless. It can look really sixties yeah. or can make it look quite grungy or like a scrub is like Mad Max. Yeah, dress it all back. Yeah. Um so with with wax, with putty, um, I'm just rubbing it in my hands and then working it to my fingertips. And only using my fingertips so you can still see the blood product. And getting it into the root because that's how we're gonna get the whole, that's how we're gonna get the hair to stand up. So just by working it into the root, you can see that's how we get to stand up. If you just do it on the ends, it's not going to stand up, it's just going to fall down. And for me, I just work it into the hair, create an absolute mess, make her look like Goku. <laughs> Which is actually pretty cool. Um, and then once I've put it all in and then we're going to style it and brush it out and wear it how she likes it. For me I also give the space for my clients to feel comfortable to dress it themselves as well after you put the product in the hair because some people just do it themselves and they like how they do it and just giving them the comfort to touch their hair after the haircut um, is always a nice thing because sometimes people feel bad and they want to do it themselves and I'll work the product in and I'll say how's, how's it feeling, making sure it's good, making sure it's happy, and then if they want to play with it and do anything, then they can. I also like to use a comb just to sometimes just because I've been brushing it in every direction, this just helps pull it back out so I can just dress it in the right way. Happy? Yeah, really awesome. happy. Thank you for watching. Um, nice little pixie haircut for Diva. Hope you enjoyed it. And see you soon.